gamers. I'm back with another one. Today, we're gonna do a little wild replay analysis of Zemista. And I'm gonna give my opinion. A lot of people ask me what do I think about the strategies and all that. So I'm kind of gonna go through it. Um, Mista and B played in the tournament in the group Swiss round robin stage. Mista came back recently, like, I don't know, two, three weeks ago, started playing again. And um, he's had some unique takes on things. Um, and this game specifically is wild as hell. And you'll, you'll see why. Now, I'll give my opinion from like strategic point of view, like how viable it is. Not like one game, but how viable it is. Like, can he do this again in another game successfully kind of thing. Um, like the strategy he did here is cool, but I'm not sure about the, the longevity of it. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to cast the game like play by play. I'm just going to go through what he's doing and all that. Um, so yeah. Miss actually, I remember he played um, a game. I don't know. you, Mister, you probably remember you because he's in the chat. You remember games uh, as well. I remember you versus Demu on uh, Altai. It was French versus China. Do you remember that game? I don't know where it was played, but it re this game reminded me of that. So basically what he did in that game is like the meta was always to attack in Feudalist French, right? But he went like double or no, it was like triple or quad TC. And then he made like two knights and then was making units because he thought he was going to get attacked. And this is when players were a lot worse or, you know, worse skill wise. So Demu didn't scout as much and then missed the wall of the map and went Imperial with only two knights. And then literally when Demu saw it, he tried to attack. And then there was like two keeps. I think there was a red palace as well. And then he just massed knights and, and beat his ass. So this game kind of reminded me of that. Not to that extent, but that's the first thing that, that I thought of um, when I saw this game. So, yeah. Alright, so... Starting out this game, it's pretty normal. Nothing unusual, I would say. I think uh, B goes for, like, multiple TCs. And Mista goes for... Oh yeah, this, this part I didn't really get. Like, he goes archer range, but then doesn't make anything out of it. And I'm not even sure if B scouted it. Okay, he did, yeah. So I don't know, maybe just like a fake archer range to, to feign aggression, I'm not sure, but yeah. So he goes, and I'm assuming he maybe thought that this is going to be here, or maybe he thought that this is not going to be as fast, but TC was right here, and it's fully completed. Behind, he went for second TC, um, pretty standard, and he only made one knight, right? Got a nice TC here around the gold. Um... So yeah, pretty standard. Now this is the part where it kind of gets weird. So Abbasid, uh, usually when the French goes to TC, Abbasid likes to go three. So Mist is starting to wall off here, which to me, if I see this, like that's kind of weird. Like French, okay, he doesn't see it yet, but French walling off this early is pretty uncommon and not needed because you're gonna be the one attacking. So B sees some units, but Mista is not committing at all. He's actually going for a third TC because now B doesn't even know that there's a third TC, right? Or actually, I don't, I don't know if he saw. I don't think he did see the, the stone. So B's got third TC, and this looks like a normal game. Mista makes a few more production buildings, but he's not really producing out of them. Um, like maybe a few archers here and there, getting some spearmen. And he is still continuing to uh, wall, and soon he does like a massive wall. Oh, B remade a scout, okay. Okay, he remade a scout, he saw the stone, so he should know that there's 3 TC, and now he sees walls too. So this kind of indicates, not kind of, but this indicates defensive play, right? That you're not really gonna attack. Because if you're placing all these walls, that could have been, you know, units, right? Could have been... Production buildings could have been a lot of different things. 
Like, if this was against other sieves, I would say it, it's fine. Like, if this was obviously like a French mirror or French versus Rus or French versus English, like, yeah, you do these walls, but against Abbasid, it's not needed. So, to me, it kind of like the moment I saw this, I was like, okay, he's not gonna, you know, he, he, he's not gonna be attacking. And I'm not sure if he sees here. Oh, that's unfortunate. He did not see the age up kicked up, but it's right here. So, Mist is going Guild Hall. He's making more barracks. So, so far, like, this is uncommon play, but it's not necessarily, like, weird or bad play. It's just, you know, it's more common to be aggressive, that's all. Right? So, Mr. reaches castle, B reaches castle. And I guess B also saw that there's not a lot of units coming out, so he went somewhat fast castle. So, everything is great. Mist is going for eco upgrades immediately. Right? No military upgrades. He doesn't even have blacksmith. Right? No blacksmith. More production. He's getting a horseman upgrade. He's gonna get some relics. And overall, pretty passive game. Now we see another set of walls here. I guess to protect this stone. But he could just run in if it's a problem. So that, another set of, set of walls. And now, what actually throws, because Mist is wild, but what actually throws me off is B has played two series. He played a series against Kilardi and he's played the series against Mista. In both series, he's playing very passive. Like, he is playing a style similar to what, like, Marine Lord and I did. But a long time ago. It reminds me of like a mix of Marine Lord, me, and Dem Mustrad. Like, where it's kind of like you're defending, you're going eco, but you're not really attacking. Which is really weird to see because we usually like Omega all in. It's like feudal for 30 minutes if needed, right? But he's been playing super passive. And this move, this keep on the big gold, it's, it's fine to do, but this is like very outdated. Like, people don't really do this anymore because you don't need the big gold yet. And you can just attack instead. Like, instead of making this keep and building it, you can just make more units and attack, right? So, this felt really weird, the fact that he was putting down this keep. But I was like, I mean, okay, maybe he's playing for late game, but again, that's not what B does usually. So, it was a very weird approach, I would say, to, to what I'm used to, right? And even versus Kilari, he played very defensive, for whatever reason. So right now, um, I think it makes more sense for uh, uh, Civ wise, it makes more sense for Abbasid to be passive than for French to be passive, right? Usually. Because um, Abbasid is better than French in like the late late game because they got better units. French that like has crossbows and, and like keeps have the, the crossbow or whatever it's called attack. But other than that, they don't really have a lot going for it. And meanwhile, obviously it has camels, it debuffs to cavalry, it gives you plus two armor on your infantry. You got spearmen that are insane, you got archers that are crazy, right? So you got a lot of options and the trade is better for Abbasid. So Abbasid in general doesn't mind if the game goes long because of those things. And you can see that B is playing like defensive because I'm assuming again, he's expecting an attack or something. But this is the part where Mist is wild. So he's on 3 TC, he's making a keep here, which uh, didn't even catch these. So it's only discounting the 3 archer ranges and barracks that doesn't work on barracks. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate. He's got a siege workshop and not a lot of units, 36 units. So if B actually just attacked him now, he's dead. That's it. That's game over. If B made one Mangonel and then pushed through, um, and then if you saw the Siege Workshop, he could have made Springles as well on the field. And, you know, Abbasid in general is very strong in Castle, especially because of the Abbasid Archers. So B has been kind of standing here with the army for a long time without really pushing. And I guess he realizes, like, something weird is happening because French is not moving out. So he decides to push through. Mr. Throw, throws down another keep over here. 
And, um, yeah. So the plan for Mista behind this was to rush Imperial. And you'll see why. So he pushes in here, but realistically this could have been done like five minutes ago, four or five minutes ago, right? Like this push is way, way, way too delayed. If you look at the military, I guess there are keeps, uh, but I mean, you can fight under a keep. Like it's not doing that much damage. You can see the Lancers are tanking quite a bit. So for Mista, like all you gotta do now is like maybe make Sprinkles or something to, to hold until you get Imperial. I was making a red palace. I didn't really like red palace here. I think red palace would maybe even like just like right here, just throw it down in between everything would be really good. But I'm, I'm guessing it's like maybe to secure gold, maybe it was a panic red palace. I don't know. So B now goes in, and when I say imperial rush, I don't mean like 10 minute imperial, but this is a for French, this is a very fast imperial in general. So some units go in, he's got so many archers, and now the problem starts, right? So at this point, the game is over. At this point, um, maybe not necessarily over, but he has to go back, right? He cannot push into this. Like, you cannot. You need to go back immediately. Why? Well, because he got Red Palace, all his buildings just got 62 Arbalest attack. All his keeps and all his town centers. So B does a thing that you shouldn't and he attacks in between a keep and two town centers. So his army is about to get completely blasted. Even though he has more units, you can see the keeps have villager or the keep has villagers inside too. And our blessed attack is two shotting units and it's shooting fast as fuck. As you can see, look at that. So you cannot engage into that, right? So he goes back. And Mista decides to make more town centers. Now these town centers are not to boom more because he's already at a good villager count. It's just to get the Arbalest upgrade because it's better than a Springle Tower upgrade. That does more damage. This hit was pretty kick W and this pretty much not only denies the push, but the next fight that happens, these units are so bruised up, they're gonna be in a really, really shit spot. Like when they actually fight, right? So B is trying to push in, which, um, I mean, it's just not gonna work, right? The, the Arbalest will absolutely melt everything. So the right move here for B was to actually go secure both big golds, which Mista is building now with like no unit presence because he just went for it and he, you know, finished the keep. But realistically what B should have done is go back, secure the big gold and then maybe try to deny trade so that mister runs out of gold right something along something along those lines but instead uh mister gets the gold and now you're in a situation where mister is imperial he's got all these units he's already started the upgrades and b is stuck on 45 archers that are broken in castle right they're really good but if the opponent is Imperial and you're a castle, that's not, they're not very good. Like, you would rather have 45 spears at this point, or 45 crossbows, right? Not, archers are not the best army. So even though, army-wise, the armies are, uh, like, bees even ahead, his army is not very good. And also, these are elite horsemen, so they got 7 armor, and these guys do 9 damage, right? So, not good. Um... So now you, you can kind of see he doesn't really know what to do, he doesn't really know where to go, he's just kind of standing here, and standing here like this is just waiting to overextend. He has no spearmen by the way, he has three spearmen, they just ran into archers, and these are elite horsemen, so he's just gonna jump on that and mow down his army completely, so yeah. So he's trying to stonewall Mista now, stonewall him in, but he just lost his whole army, and now He's got some camel riders, which is nice, but Mista has some spearmen, I think, in here. Or he has some men-at-arms. He has archers, he has crossbows. He's got feudal archers, Cake W. I guess he never upgraded them, but he's not producing them more anyway. And now, because Mista was 
pretty greedy, right? So he he went for eco upgrades first. He went triple TC versus three TC Abbasid, which is favored for French because you produce villagers faster. Then he went for fast Imperial and got those upgrades. B gets caught um, not only with veteran upgrades on units, like he, all his units, I think, have veteran upgrades. I don't think he has a single unit that's that's uh, that's upgraded. Yeah, all his units are, are castle, and he is fighting against elite uh, crossbows. He's fighting elite horsemen. Uh, he's fighting like with plus three against plus three ranged, plus three melee. Biology just finished, so this is basically an imperial army fighting a feudal or sorry castle army. Even though B is castle, he doesn't really have any upgrades. And his gold is non-existent, which I am not sure why. Is 37 on gold somewhere? Question mark. Where the fuck does he have 37 on gold? Am I blind? Oh, I think he sent them. Yeah, he's not gathering any gold right now. I don't know where these villagers are. Are they? He had a lot of villagers here, but they're gone. So yeah, he has no villagers, so he literally just has no gold. He hasn't upgraded any anything. He's making tiny keeps. And at this point, because of the economy that Mista has, they have the same economy, except Mista has more gold. B has no gold, he has all the upgrades. So he's just gonna push through. And instead of making keeps when you push through, you know, sometimes you do like a death push and you reinforce with keeps. What he did is he just made more town centers as like a pushing thing. Because town centers, because of Red Palace, they get the Arbalest upgrade. Right, so it's... It's like you can spend 350 stone to get the Arbalest upgrade, or you can spend 900 to get Arbalest upgrade and shit, like, arrow attack, right? So... He has a TC here as, like, a backup to, to protect with an Arbalest attack. Um... And now he just uh, pushes through. I think he just mines stone and, and like puts more and more town centers through. They fight here, but again, all these units are still in castle. Uh, camels are upgraded, elite camels, so that's nice. But Mista has way more units. He's got a mango that was shooting, or two mangoes all the time. Places a keep here. And now he's gonna push in and proceed to put more TCs. There's a cannon. And cannon does a shit ton of damage, by the way. 600 damage for his building. So that thing is gonna go down fast. He's putting a TC right here as like a reinforcement point. And, um... Yeah, he's pushing through. The crossbows are still pushing. Crossbows, obviously, uh, French crossbows are very, very strong, so they can kind of fight against everything, right? They have high damage, they got uh, quite strong armor, 8 armor versus melee, 3 versus range, and they can also activate this with 5 range armor. Uh, so you can see eight, 8 armor versus melee, and he had 8 versus range, so that's pretty good. Making another keep, the cannons are doing damage, he's pushing through, and... B did get some upgrades in the end. Here you can see the elite spearman now. But a little bit too late, like he has no units now, so yeah. Kick W upgrades. And now B also has 4,000 food per minute. Earlier they both had around 2,500, so he added more... Um, what's it called? He added more farms. But, uh, yeah, so the game ends, right? He's making another TC here, and again, this is for Arbalest Upgrade. Some people were like, is he BMing or something? It's like, nope, he's just doing it for Arbalest Upgrade because it does a fuck ton of damage. Instead of making, like I said, one keep, you can make two TCs and have 200 stone left over. So, um, people ask me to review this game and to give my opinion. Do I think this is going to become a new meta? Absolutely not. Do I think some people will use this? Uh, yeah, people will try for sure. Like any strategy anyone does, people will try and people will do. But I have a hard time seeing Mista playing against Lucifer or Vortex that are like Omega aggressive and pulling this off, this off against them. Because not only they would attack in Feudal, but they would also attack in Castle immediately, no matter what Civ they play, right? So, like... 
in order for this strategy to work, the opponent literally has to not attack you. Because if he attacks you, you're forced to make units. And if you make units, you cannot do an Imperial Rush. If you don't do an Imperial Rush, then you're having a, a normal game, right? So I don't know if this was Mista's plan, like from the get-go. For me, like the way he was placing the walls, I feel like it was his plan from the get-go. Maybe it wasn't. Like I said, I don't know. But I don't think that if he faced... And again, I, I, I know this was B and he's usually aggressive, but he was very passive in the past two series he's played in the tournament. So I think if someone more aggressive played, I don't think that would have worked. Um, but I'm here and I hope I'm proved wrong. Uh, I think like me and everyone else included loves watching Mista games because like they're wild and they're entertaining, right? I would love if he used it again against someone else and won with it uh, because a strategy, like every strategy can be strong once, right? And this is something you might be able to use here and there. But now everyone's watched that game and everyone knows that. So if someone plays against Mista and they see walls like that, they will all in the shit out of him. Right? So Mista says this is a tournament strategy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this is not an everyday strategy, which doesn't mean it's a bad or good or amazing, right? It's a tournament strategy. I, I can't. I don't think Mist is gonna use that one again. He might, but I think that the next time someone plays against Mist and he plays French, they will all in the shit out of him. As in, they're gonna attack him in field, they're gonna attack him in castle, because they know there's a potential of it, which then opens up space for more strat, more different strategies from Mist, right? Like maybe next time he plays French, he does the Omega all in. So people think he's gonna do this, but then he all ins, you know. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it's gonna become meta. I think it's a cool strat. Uh, but I would not imagine this become a thing in like conquer ladder. This might be a thing in like lower leagues because people don't attack. But I think in, um, you know, if you're playing against an aggro player, that's going to be harder to pull off. So this is another game. Uh, so Mist ended up losing the series three to two. Um, and I feel like the only two games that were kind of interesting, I mean, obviously, a unique strategy is only interesting when it wins, right? Um, when someone plays a new strategy or interesting strategy and they lose, it, it doesn't look good, right? It looks pretty bad. But when a new or unique strategy works out, it looks amazing. So I didn't want to go through the other three games because they were um, they were losses and then it's like, you know, like I said, it kind of works out differently. Um, but this one was also interesting. It's not it's not as wild as the previous one, but uh, we've seen, in my opinion, Malian's not that strong uh, anymore. Like, I feel like a lot of people learn how to play against Malians and they've been doing better and better against Malians. Now, I don't think Malian is weak, but um, this matchup is usually looked at as a pretty good matchup for Ottomans, and Ottomans usually do like a 1TC uh, play, and they just kind of all in and, and commit, and in this one Mr. went with 2TC, and I've been playing 2TC Ottoman for a while in different matchups, and in some matchups it's like really shit it feels like, in some matchups it's pretty decent. Um, it's like if you do 2TC against French or something, it, it kind of feels rough, like I feel like I'm put on back foot. But because you're playing against um, Malian that wants to like build up the pit mines, they want to go for a cow boom. You kind of have enough time as Ottoman to get a second town center because you also need extra stone and resource to build up military schools and all that shit, right? So you kind of need a little bit of space from the enemy to do all these things and, and Malian is not really played as it used to like with Malian scouts and like fucking you just go immediately. It's it's a bit more like boomy with the cows and all that. So Mista goes for two town centers here. Um, there's something changed recently with uh, Minaret Madras. I don't know what but the villagers are like really fucking dented. Like sometimes, so before you put your villagers here and they go here, then here, then here, then here. But now sometimes, I have two, I have four villagers. Two go here, and then two go here. I don't know why or how that happens. 
But this was changed after they put in like a change that it takes like longer for the thing to spawn or I can't remember what they did, but they messed something up. They messed something up. Cause look, he's got these berries, right? And then the villagers went here, which makes no sense. Why didn't they go on this one? It's closer. Anyway. Missed the one for second TC right here. Mm -hmm. And he got extra stone for more military schools. And now he's gonna make some units, but not really super commit or anything. But like he's gonna produce some sipahis, some archers, and he's just gonna go for um, for super fast castle age up, which is what we've seen other players experience with, like faster age up. And again, I am very confused. Right? B is playing giga passive. I don't understand why. I don't know if he's like trying to change his play style or something. I'm not really sure. Like maybe that's a thing. Maybe he's trying to switch it up to change the play style. I don't know. But this is not how he usually plays. Like he would all in in feudal with like for like 40 minutes two weeks ago. So, I don't know. So he goes for an age up here. Mister went for an age up. And now Mister's just, he's not really harassed. Like he's harassing here, but he's not really committing. Like he's not going in trying to kill stuff. He just masses up an army. This was pretty funny. Cause he probably had higher attack speed with the abilities. So he just burns the thing. Um. So he's just gonna mass up an army, and because he's also making Mangonos, it's kind of annoying and scary to play against Ottoman in Castle, because you kind of have, have to build Springhold if the enemy is controlling well. You gotta build Springhold, and then you gotta waste resources there, there and you know? So, Mista just goes for a little bit of everything, and has some men-at-arms, which are very strong against Malian, because the only way for Malian to kill men-at-arms effectively is Musafaris. But then Ultiman has so much ranged units that um, that the Musafaris are just gonna melt, right? So he has some Sipahi, some crossbows, some archers, some spearmen, like a little bit of everything. He's got Mechter again uh, as well. And now Mista is just gonna go for... He's making a, a monastery or mosque, which is... Uh, he's gonna try to pick up some relics. And now B goes for attack. But this army is just a lot stronger. A lot, a lot stronger. Like, he's got a lot of javelin throwers, so he can't pick off the, the back line and stuff like that. But this is kind of like the death army, right? Like, Malian is not very good when you're fighting big armies. Malian is very good to do shit like this. Like, if B took, like, another 8 sofas or 10 sofas and ran it on this side and then some sofas on this side, like, that's kind of how you want to play. Especially probably in this matchup, but they kind of have a head-on fight, which just does not end up working uh, for B. Like, there's so many crossbows, there's some Janissaries as well. Javelin throwers are picking off stuff, but there's Mangonels that are absolutely fucking trashing them. The Sofas end up dying, chased by Sipahi. And after that fight, I mean, it's pretty bad, right? Because I don't even, to be fair, I don't even know what the fuck you make as Malians against this. Because you, well, you need a Springhold, but then it's like, what do you make after? You don't have any uh, tanky melee units, I guess sofas are. Um, but other than that, it's it's a pretty rough one, I think. And Mista just goes for a straight up push. And after losing the, the big fight, it's going to be pretty rough. He tries to snipe the mangoes, which just does not work out at all. And uh, how many crossbows? 12 crossbows and 14 janissaries. So these sofas are like getting absolutely plastered. Now it's three mangoes. And that's pretty much game, right? But I feel like people always thought, you know, 
for a while. Like, we've always thought that, oh, you gotta be super aggressive against Molly, and especially against Calboon. But I feel like some civs have the potential, like Ottomans, to just play a bit more passive and then just do one big push. Just say, like, yeah, let's fight in Castle. Because I think that what usually happens is, like, people try to out boom Malians and then they're too late into castle or they're trying to commit too much in feudal and then they usually have fights where Malian has upgraded army and and you know you don't so when the fight happens like the sofas are not taking any damage but this was like castle versus castle at the same time but Mist also had a second DC and military schools so it's kind of like you know via Skabu Mista has two DC and, and military school and then, you know, B went for a shitload of sofas, but obviously having Janissary crossbow unit comp against that is not going to work out too, too well for you. So, yeah, overall, I thought it was an interesting series. Um, like I said, the French strategy was cool. Don't think we're going to be seeing it too, too much. The Ottoman strategy, I would say, is, is not like a tournament strategy. The Ottoman strategy is a viable strategy, uh, especially against Malian. Um like playing like this and also i've um like i said i've been also playing two tc ottoman and against some saves it feels like very fucking awful and against some saves it feels pretty good and one of them as you can see right there is uh malian i'm excited to see uh you know mr play more see what strategies he can come up but i'm also excited for mr to play against lucifer vortex marine lord or myself because those be uh those be some good matches because mm -hmm. i think obviously he came back recently so i think for him to play on like pure mechanics is probably not the best idea because we've been you know playing the whole time but uh so it would be interesting to see him pull some strategies uh against us so i'm excited to see uh, you know, like I said, Mist is in the chat. I'm excited to see your games, Mr. next week. See what you come up with. And, um, yeah, that's it. Mist is wild. He's back. Another wild player, by the way, is Kiliardi. If you end up watching the EGC TV tournament that's happening every Saturday and Sunday from 5 p.m. CST, check out his games as well. He is fucking wild, brother. So, yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, check me out on Twitch. I'm probably live right now. Uh, I've started doing a thing. Uh, I already said it on Twitch, but I'm going to be doing two best of seven show matches on my stream every single day. And if I lose, I am going to give my opponent $100. If I win, I don't want anything from my opponent. And I have uh, already the next three days booked up. And I'm obviously going to be playing against like the top pro players that are up for this. So... If you want to see that, check me out on Twitch as well. Uh, YouTube gamers, have a good one. Twitch gamers, let's keep going.